Everywhere Carver went, he had this innate ability to connect with people of all creeds, cultures, and colors. He had an effect on those he met as they had an effect on him. They learned from one another. The community of Tuskegee was no different. He wanted to know everything about me, my background, my mother, my father, uh, my sisters and brothers. And from that time, we got to be very good friends. He liked fat back. And my daddy would, that was his specialty. And his friend, Mr. Parker Felton Parker, was a baker, but he also was a barber. And he used to cut Carver's hair. And so Mr. Parker and my dad were both proud of knowing Carver and uh, being able to do a little something for him. They respected him. Oh, yes, that my dad was so proud that he took fat back to Carver. <laughs> he had to have his dinner on 12 o'clock. If it was not there, he would not eat it. But one day, a mother came in pre-eclampsia. She was pregnant. Well, he didn't get his dinner at 12 noon that day. He got it at 1 o'clock. I told him while I was late. I said, a mother came in pre-eclampsia. She was in a coma. And Dr. Mitchell called us to the operating room, and that's why your dinner is late. Well, I would not be in the world if it had not been for a female, my mother. He ate his dinner. She always said that Dr. Carver was such a gentle person, so kind, so caring. And I said, well, Mommy, how do you figure that? He said, well, he would stop, he would talk, he would take time. Most agree that Carver was a gifted teacher, whether in the classroom or in the field, who instilled a sense of wonder and curiosity in his students. I interviewed a number of his former students. Admittedly, they were quite elderly, but they had a great admiration for him as a teacher. I don't think he was a conventional teacher who stood before class and lectured. One former student of his described him to me as being like Socrates. Uh, he said he would never tell you anything. He would force you to work for answers yourself. And I think that's why students found him so challenging and interesting. And there's abundant evidence that he spent enormous amount of time with students and that even after students left, he maintained correspondence was with them. And a lot of these letters, and I've read many of them, are addressed to him as Dear Daddy, Dear Father, Dear Dad. And he would often sign these letters as Your Father. He never married and never had children. I think his students were his surrogate children in that regard. Just as simple, individual, wasn't hard to talk to, just as kind and nice. You would think, you know, he would, you know, being a genius, you know, he would, you would think he would kind of be a little standoff, a little selfish, not kind and not polite. He just act like a real human being. You must get an education and you must do this and you must do that. And he really affected my life greatly. <laughs>